Hi, in this video I explain the difference between parametric and non-parametric hypothesis testing. Why are you interested in this topic? You want to calculate a hypothesis test, but you don't know exactly what the difference is between a parametric and a non-parametric test, and you're wondering when to use which test. If you want to calculate a hypothesis test, you must first check the assumptions for the test. One of the most common assumptions is that your data is normally distributed. In simple terms, if your data is normally distributed, parametric tests are used, such as the t-test, analysis of variance or Pearson correlation. If your data is not normally distributed, Non-parametric tests are used, such as Mann-Whitney U-test or Spearman's correlation. What about the other assumptions? Of course, you still need to check whether there are other assumptions for the test. In general, however, non-parametric tests make fewer assumptions than parametric tests. So why use parametric tests at all? Parametric tests are generally more powerful than non-parametric tests. What does that mean? Here is an example. You have formulated your null hypothesis, men and women are paid equally. Whether this null hypothesis is rejected depends on the difference in salary, the dispersion of the data and the sample size. In a parametric test, a smaller difference in salary or a smaller sample is usually sufficient to reject the null hypothesis. If possible, always use parametric tests. What is the structural difference between parametric and non-parametric tests? Let's take a look at Pearson correlation and Spearman's rank correlation, as well as a t-test for independent samples and the Mann-Whitney U-test. Let's start with the Pearson and Spearman correlation. The Spearman's rank correlation is the non-parametric counterpart to the Pearson correlation. What is the difference between the two correlation coefficients? Spearman correlation does not use raw data, but the ranks of the data. Let's look at an example. We measure the reaction time of eight computer players and ask their age. When we calculate a Pearson correlation, we simply take the two variables reaction time and age and calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient. However, we now want to calculate Spearman's rank correlation. So first we assign a rank to each person for reaction time and age. The reaction time is already sorted by size. 12 is the smallest value, so gets rank 1. 15 the second smallest, so gets rank 2. And so on and so forth. We are now doing the same with age. Here we have the smallest value. There the second smallest, here the third smallest, fourth smallest and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at this in a scatter plot. Here we see the raw data of age and reaction time. But now we would like to use the rankings. So we form ranks from the variables age and reaction time. Through this transformation we have now distributed our data more evenly. To get Spearman's correlation, we simply calculate Pearson correlation from the ranks. So Spearman correlation is equal to Pearson correlation, only that the ranks are used instead of raw values. What about a t-test for independent samples and the Mann-Whitney U-test? The t-test for independent samples and the Mann-Whitney U-test check whether there is a difference between two groups. An example. Is there a difference between the reaction time of men and women? The man whitney U-test is the non-parametric counterpart to the T-test for independent samples. But there is an important difference between the two tests. The T-test for independent samples tests whether there is a mean difference. For both samples, the mean value is calculated and it is tested whether these mean values differ significantly. The man whitney U test on the other hand checks whether there is a rank sum difference. How do we calculate the rank sums? 
For this purpose, we sort all persons from the smallest to the largest value. This person has the smallest value, so gets rank 1. That person has the second smallest value, so gets rank 2. And this person has the third smallest value, and so on and so forth. Now we have assigned a rank to each person. Then we can simply add up the ranks of the first group and the second group. In the first group we get a rank sum of 42. And in the second group a rank sum of 36. Now we can investigate whether there is a significant difference between these rank sums. If you want to know more about the Man with Me U test, check out my related video. So we can summarize. The raw data are used for parametric tests and the ranks of the raw data are used for non-parametric tests. The hypothesis test you use usually depends on how many variables you have and whether it is an independent or dependent sample. In most cases there is always a non-parametric counterpart to parametric tests. So if you do not meet the assumptions for the parametric test, you can use the non-parametric counterpart. But don't worry, DataTab will do its best to help you choose the right hypothesis test. Of course, you can calculate the most common parametric and non-parametric tests with DataTab Online. Simply copy your own data into the table and your variables will appear here below. Now click on the variables you want to calculate a hypothesis test for. For example, if you choose salary and gender, a t-test will be calculated. Here you can check the assumptions. If the assumptions are not met, you can simply click on non-parametric and a man with the u-test will be calculated. If you click on salary and company, an analysis of variance is calculated. Or in the non-parametric case, the Kruskal-Wallis test. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.